Well, it's meal planning time again for me. So I thought as I was going to meal plan for my family, I would go ahead and take you along with me so you can see how I do it. Um, I have a meal planner that I created called Just Meal Plan. And I will put a card in the box somewhere and a link in the description box if you want to see a walkthrough video of that. But um, these are some pages that I created that I use to help me you know, keep things in order and meal plan. Okay, so I meal plan twice a month. My husband, he gets paid twice a month. He gets paid on the 15th of each month and then at the end of each month. So, I plan meals for two weeks at, for two weeks at a time. We have a family of four. Um, we live on one income. Our food budget, our grocery budget, is $215 for each paycheck. That's a total of $430 a month. But um, that total, you know, that includes the food you eat. If we happen to go and eat out, no matter if it's at the drive-thru at McDonald's or an actual sit-down restaurant, that money comes out of our food budget. Animal feed comes out of the food budget. Uh, paper towels, cleaners, even uh, like vitamins comes out of the food budget. Even if we happen to go to the doctor, which doesn't happen, but occasionally it does, uh, the copay, you know, um, also comes out of the food budget. So, you know, and shampoos, personal products, everything, light bulbs even, everything comes out of that food budget. So whenever you take that into account, you know, you think a total of $430 a month for four people for food, eating out, doctor, vitamins, every household thing, that really does not sound very easy to work with. So I have to be frugal. Um, I make pretty much everything from scratch. Um, a lot of our syrups, like uh, pancake syrup, chocolate syrup for milk, um, I make homemade. Uh, ranch dressing, I make homemade. My sauces are all homemade. Uh, we don't buy prepackaged stuff. Everything's homemade. Um, we eat our leftovers. If I have made a big pot of chili and we have eaten chili, you know, for supper that night, for lunch the next day, supper the next day, and we are just tired of chili, I will put it in the freezer and then I will use it again, you know, maybe the following month or two. So, we do use our leftovers. I have been trying new recipes here the last couple of months, and there have been some recipes that I've tried that's new that we just do not like. Ugh, they just have not been very good. But, you know, if you buy those ingredients, you can't just throw it out because it tastes bad. So we make it into something new. For example, the other night, I have never made white chili before. I have never even tasted white chili before. The other night, I came across a recipe for white chili. It sounded good, and you were supposed to make it in a crock pot. It sounded like a great idea. So I made this white chili. It was fine. I mean, it, you know, you could taste the chili in it, I guess. Uh, but it had white beans instead of the chili beans. It had chicken instead of the beef. You know, and it was like white in color, and it had chicken broth instead of the tomato sauce. Anyway, it was fine, but we're not going to make it again. It was Maybe it was just a bad recipe. I don't know. Um, we were not impressed. But I made this big pot of it, <laughs> and we could not throw it away. But none of us wanted to eat it again. So instead, I took it, and I drained off all of the excess liquid, which there wasn't much, you know, because chili's pretty thick anyway. But I drained off all the excess liquid. And then I uh, threw in some homemade taco seasoning in it. And then we have just been scooping that into tortillas with sour cream and shredded cheese. And hot sauce, of course. Everything's better with hot sauce on it. And I've uh, just been making it in burritos. So, I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, chicken chili burritos, maybe? I don't know. But we've been having it in burritos. And it actually tastes awesome. I mean, it tastes like that's what it was made for. So, you know, just, if you don't like something, 
rework it, make it into something new. Uh, we've done that many times. Sometimes, you know, I'll just make enough of something, and it's not that it's not good, it's just we might get tired of eating it or bored with it. So we will just make it into something new. So I will show you how I meal plan, and I'm getting ready to, th to do that now. So I am sitting down to meal plan now, and some things that I need when I'm meal planning is obviously a pen or a pencil. I need my meal planning calendar, so this calendar is for the month of November, and I will be planning meals for the next two weeks. My husband got paid yesterday, so we will be planning meals for the next two weeks here. Um, I also need my calendar. This calendar has everything that we have going on this month. And some of these events I will transfer to my meal plan, but only if they affect, you know, me cooking. Okay. I also have my inventory sheet. This lists all the food that I currently have. Um, it does not list things like fresh produce. It does not list things that I use all the time, like tomato sauce, chili beans, you know, olive oil, cocoa, things like that. It does not include that. It does not include anything that is in the refrigerator. It only includes stuff that I don't use as often and meats. So it has um, it has all my home canned stuff in uh, stuff on here. It has my noodles, my beans, my rice, and meat. Um, you know, and then more odd and stuff. I have my my list that is that stays on the refrigerator for as we run out of things, I write them down. Another thing I do when I go to meal plan, I also go to the sell bills for the stores. So I've already done that. And here's some things that Aldi's has on sale, Harps and Town and Country. So they have a bunch of stuff on sale for this next week and pretty good deals, but I only wrote down the things that I would normally buy anyway um, or that I'm interested in. Like, for example, down here at Town & Country, I don't really buy meat from Town & Country. We have a local healthy butcher shop, and so we get our meat through there, but these prices that Town & Country has, has on their meat, ugh, it's hard. I, I at least wrote it down because they are such good prices, um, you know, so I am interested in them. Okay, so I have already, I've, I've let, looked at my calendar and I have already taken some of the events we have going on and I have transferred them to my meal planning calendar, but like I said, only the ones that would affect my meal plan. So for example, Saturday, we have ladies night at church and that'll be at six o'clock in the evening well if I don't know if I'm gonna go or not but if I do go obviously I won't be home cooking so um, I'll probably go ahead and schedule that as a leftover night because I don't think I'll know if I'm gonna go or not until it's time to go so and then the following Wednesday next Wednesday we have church church supper in a business meeting. So when I prepare food, I'm going to be taking that to church. So I'll have to, you know, make a big meal there. And the next day is Thanksgiving. So um, I don't really have to plan cooking an actual meal on Thanksgiving. We're going to have it at my, at my mom's this year. So I'm going to have to make the desserts and the rolls. And uh, my mom will bring the turkey or ham. And uh, my sister will do some side dishes. And I'll do a couple side dishes as well, but my main job is the desserts and the rolls. Um, on the 22nd, we have a birthday party to go to that evening, and supper will be there. 
So, you know, so I just have a few days here to plan out. Okay. <clears throat> so, what I do is I look at my inventory sheet and I look at all the items I have and see what I can combine to make a meal out of instead of buying more food at the stores. Okay, I have already, to try to speed up this video a little bit, I have already done that. And I made a little chicken scratch note section over here. So I have come up with spaghetti and garlic bread, homemade pizza, taco salad, baked rabbit, steamed okra, Spanish rice burritos, potato soup, shake and bake pork chops, homemade macaroni and cheese and green beans, and then hash. Those will be, how many do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those will be nine different meals. Okay, so I will go ahead and I will plug those meals into these open dates that I have. And if I have any remaining dates left, I've decided to look through, I've decided to use this cookbook um, this time. I hardly ever use this cookbook, so I decided just to open it up and pick out some new meals from here. Okay, so what I do, <clears throat> so I've got a plan for tomorrow night, which is the 16th. I will be getting my groceries today, this evening, okay? So I'm going grocery shopping tonight. So i got to start planning for tomorrow. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug pizza in for tomorrow. It'll be homemade pizza, of course. And then the next day on Thursday, <clears throat> see, I think I'll just do I think I'll do the baked rabbit. Steamed okra. And probably I'll do mashed potatoes as well. So we'll have baked rabbit, steamed okra, and mashed potatoes for supper on Thursday. Now even though I'm filling these meals in on these given days, you know, it, it does not bother me um, to flip-flop them around like once a day gets there or something last minute comes up, plans get changed, moved around. It's fine. I can just flip the meals around. It's not a big deal. All right. On the 19th, with that ladies' night, like I said, I don't know if I'm going to go or not, but I'm going to go ahead and put leftovers there. Okay, so since I'm going to have leftovers on the 19th, whether or not I go, I need at least three good meals day after day before I schedule leftovers to make sure that there is enough leftovers for that meal. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do taco salad. Alright, and then, so that takes care of pizza, taco salad, baked chicken, <clears throat> I mean baked rabbit. Okay, so since I will have leftovers on that Saturday, I will have to cook something fresh on Sunday. And, let's see, I think I'll just make, I think I'll do potato soup. So we will have some potato soup, and I, I made hot rolls, or yeast rolls as some people call them, yesterday, and we will have some left over still. So we will have potato soup with rolls, and then on Monday, on Monday I will have, let's see, in my head I'm trying to think of, because I know I will be going, um, once a week I go to a neighboring town to do, to take care of some business. So I know one day that week I will be going. And I'm trying to figure out what day would be best. Because I won't go on the church supper day because I'll be home all day cooking. 
won't go on Thanksgiving because I'll be home cooking. Um, okay, and that business I have to go to will only be open on Monday and Tuesday. Um, hmm. I think I will go to that neighboring town on Monday. So, which means I need to have something pretty easy to make for supper that night. Something that doesn't take a long time to cook because we'll be doing school and then we'll be going to that town and then be coming back. So it needs to be something quick. So spaghetti and garlic bread is quick. I will do spaghetti and garlic bread and corn. <coughs> okay. Right. And you know, I just thought of something. I have some Brussels sprouts in the refrigerator that I need to use. So, instead of steamed okra with the baked rabbit, I will just have baked Brussels sprouts. And they are actually good. Yes, they are. <laughs> I hated Brussels sprouts as a kid. Um, but the way I make them, they're just awesome. You just take them, clean them off, have them up, toss them with olive oil and quite a bit of garlic salt, maybe some pepper, and bake them in the oven, um, like 350, and it takes quite a while for them to bake. But bake them and then stir them, like, you know, turn them over every 10 to 15 minutes until they're tender and they have like a nice golden crisp on the outside. They are so, so good. Okay, so on the 22nd, I had moved this birthday party thing over here. So we will actually be um, having dinner at a friend's because of the party. So I don't have to cook that night. Alright. Now on the church supper night, uh, I've got to figure out a big dish for that. Um, Alright, I think for that I will make hash and rolls because if I don't make rolls for the church people, they want to know why. <laughs> so I will make hash and rolls and then I need some kind of vegetable to take as well. Um, hmm. I don't know. I might, I might come back to that. But I need to take a dessert. So I think I'm going to take for dessert chocolate zucchini cake. Chocolate zucchini cake. Okay. For the dessert, I mean for the vegetable, I don't know. I don't know. <coughs> Okay, so on Thanksgiving, you know, I've got to make the, uh, the rolls and pies and I've got to talk to my family, but to see what kind of different desserts they'll, they will want. Oh, they will want the peanut butter fingers, the peanut butter bars. If I don't make those, my brother will ask where they are. Okay, one thing I forgot to do and mention to you is that while I write down the meals to have, I am to put down, just on my rough little list here, I am to put down any ingredients that I need to buy for those meals. Now you'll notice that as I have been writing these down, I've not been looking at what the ingredients take. That is because I make this stuff often enough. I already know in my head that I have this stuff on hand. Um, and so far, for the most part, these are things, like I told you, these are meals I came up with using what I already have anyhow. So, so far I don't have to write anything down. So the day after Thanksgiving will probably be a leftover day because after Thanksgiving there's always a bunch of leftovers so we will have 
Um, you know, mom will send us all home with turkey or ham or whatever she decides to make for that. And, uh, you know, we'll all swap out our sides and desserts and things like that. So, that'll be leftovers. <clears throat> Alright, the next day, I think I will make, I think that Saturday, I will make the homemade macaroni and cheese. Homemade mac and cheese. And we'll have green beans. Yes, I know. You're probably wondering, well, where is your meat? Well, you know, it's okay. This homemade mac and cheese, it's not, you know, like your, your cardboard box macaroni and cheese. And uh, it's not just as simple as throwing uh, your macaroni noodles into a pot and, and boiling it and then adding your cheese. It's not that plain. This is, this is, you know, well, it's called gourmet macaroni and cheese. You know, it has different kinds of cheeses. It's put in a slow cooker for a few hours. It has uh, breadcrumbs. It's just, it's an actual meal, and it's really good. <coughs> Okay. <clears throat> the next day, Sunday, I have some leftover Spanish rice in the freezer. So I'm going to get that out and we will just have the Spanish rice burritos. Okay. Now I need to plan for three more days. Um, the 30th, let's see, the 30th, my husband will be getting paid again. I'm trying to decide if I will be going to the big city that I go to, to grocery shop or not. I don't think I will that day, so I definitely do need to plan meal. Okay, so how many... We have a meal here, here, All right. I think on Monday I will do the shake and bake pork chops. So, shake and bake pork chops. And uh, I don't have to buy a shake and bake, you know, the mixed stuff. I just make my own. So shake and bake pork chops. And I will do the steamed okra for there. And I don't know if I want scalloped potatoes or mashed potatoes. I'll just put down potatoes and then whatever I feel like making that night, I'll just make. Um, it doesn't matter either way. You know, as long as I have potatoes, I can make them however I want because it's homemade. Okay. So. I know that we will have, because I make a big pot of the homemade mac and cheese, so I know we will have quite a bit of that left. Plus, we will have the Spanish rice left, and probably a couple pork chops left. So I think I will go ahead and do leftovers on the 29th. And then I will do a meal on the 30th. That way, because I may go ahead and go grocery shopping the next day, I don't know. We'll just have to see. So, so far I don't have to um, add anything to my list because, like I said, I already have all this stuff here currently by just using what I already have. So you may be wondering why I have scheduled okra for like two weeks away. You know, you may think it's going to go bad. Well, no, it's not because it's canned okra. Um, a couple summers ago, we grew okra and I canned it, so I will just open the can and that will be our steamed okra. So I'm just going to look through this book here for, I need one more recipe. Oh, chicken pot pie. That's right. And that's something else I forgot to mention. Whenever I get on the video, I get so nervous, I lose my train of thought completely. Okay. So something else I forgot to mention was 
Before I go to actually fill in days with meals, I look at the last two weeks, which I know I did not do that this time, but like I said, you make me nervous. <laughs> so, but I always go and look at the last two weeks to see if there were any meals that I did not make. Okay, and uh, I have made every one of these meals except for the chicken pot pie. I did not make chicken pot pie. Um, so, I have the stuff for that though. It's still there and uh, it's homemade chicken pot pie. So I will just go ahead and fill that in for that day. Chicken pot pie. That is something my family looks forward to. Uh, you know, the homemade pie crust and then you got the chicken and then all those vegetables you're putting together and then you make your own sauce for it. So that's something that they look forward to. Okay, so I have every ingredient that I need already here. So I did not have to add anything extra to my list. This list already is stuff I'm currently out of. You know, things that we just it's like a rotation, or it's like a revolving door, you know, things that we just constantly use and we're out of. So another thing that I do is I look at the items that are on sale at the local stores and I see if I can make a meal out of those. Now you will notice that I did not do that right here this time. The reason I didn't do that is because the first thing, you know, I want to do is to to make meals out of what I already have, okay? So I, that's why I took my inventory sheet. And I made meals based on what I already have, so I don't go to the store and buy anything else. So by doing that, um, I was able to fill up the next two weeks. So, now if I did not have enough stuff to make meals for the entire two weeks, then I would look at what's on sale and then I would make the remaining meals based around that. Next thing to do is if I had any ingredients that I needed to buy for these meals, of course I would add them to the list and then I would take all these items and then break them down like into categories on a on another list. You know, I'd have like like a, you know, dairy, you know, uh, chilled items or dairy and I'd put everything down that's under that aisle or that section. If I had um, baking, you know, so I'd have a baking part and have salt and like here I have cocoa, you know, so I can cocoa, chocolate chips, things like that. So that would be the next step. Then I would take that list to the store and buy that and I am good to go. I just thought I would share that with you and thank you for watching.